And welcome to everyone on the live stream. This is the uh, afternoon session for Friday, October 30th, Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute Blueprint Teaching Week. We'll just be a couple of more minutes to uh, get started here. Okay, Rick, I'm ready to go here and uh, broadcasting. Can we get that faded out there, John, please? Yeah, we're on live stream. So uh, let's start recording all let's those. Start that, recording, that everybody. Need can to can record. Gentlemen, start your recordings. Okay, here we go. And official announcement this is Friday, October 30th. Uh, it's the afternoon session with Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute Blueprint Teachings. And uh, Mr. Keshe is ready to go with the afternoon session here, I believe. Go ahead, Mr. Keshe. Session of this week of the Blueprint. As we promised, we're going to release the Blueprint today. Vince, have you received the package from uh, Marco? Yeah, it's already up on the home page. There's already been a couple hundred downloads. Pardon? Hello? I said it's it's already up on the home page and there's already a couple of hundred downloads at least. Okay, thank you very much. So, as we promised, we have released the blueprint of the energy unit. You can go on to the blueprint dot catch foundation or special yes you do you want to give the link it's right on the home page what does it can you tell www.cashfoundation.org www it's right on the home page you can download everything in detail has been given and you can see, can you share a screen that we can see it, we can go through it? Fabio? Can we share a screen or that we can see the blueprint on the screen? Yeah, on the board, yeah. Can you put it on the screen to share, Vince? Okay, I thought he would put it on, uh, put it up on there, but I can, I can see. Which one do you want first, Mr. Cash? Uh, go from the beginning of it. This is the way you connect it onto the circuit of the house. And you have to understand how and the way you connect it. The meter, the house circuit breaker, the power unit sits on a phase or what you call the hotline the lights, 
and appliances and refrigeration and the rest. Would you like to go to the beginning of the folder? It says from one to 23, please. Okay. Um, okay, I got number zero, so just give me a second. I'm looking at your screen to see if it came through and it doesn't look like it did, so just give me one second. Is that the one you're looking for, Mr. Cash? That's zero. Okay. This is to show how you wind a coil and the way they're done. If you can open it, please. This is the count and the way system gauge 14, solid copper. Insulation removed, made into a coil. In 62, 81 turn. They put the counterclockwise. Remember what we said. Can we have the next page, please? It shows in detail how you insert every detail of it. Second one. Next one, please. You see the way they set the system is the diameters and everything here. Next one, please. And the next one shows how you have to insert the wire through <laughs> and what you're going to get. You can see the connection you see the connection in the following pictures. How and the way you have to connect has been taught in the past on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. This is the firing and by nano coating using a Bhutan torch. You start, temperature should be only by right, be right before copper turns red hot. If it turns red hot, you lose your nano coating. Next one, please. See step by step what color has to be, the shape of it, the connection of it. It tells you never use metal plates. Read 
in detail. Everything has been put in step by step in detail. The next picture, please. everything step by step. There is no possibility. There is no chance you can make a mistake in how you handle the copper, what you're gonna wear, how soft the material gonna be. The next step please. You got to realize there's a small difference in the nano coating by heat and nano coating by caustic. In caustic, we create a slight gap that the heat can get in. In um, gas burning temperature, you don't have that problem because you heat up the whole element inside with nano coating is slightly different. But when you get your turns inside the uh, plate, they position themselves as they should be. Next, please. This is uh, 1.6 millimeter. Uh, so there's a slight different, if you have a copper in America, it's 1.63. The European is 1.6. Is a slight difference between the two gauge 14. Next, please. The copper you got to use, it tells you the copper that is not soft, not yellowish, and hard to bend. We saw yesterday with Sandor the problem he has with the heart, then you see a different effect from your system. It says yellowish are hard to bend because of the impurity. Okay, can we have the next? The next picture. Uh, that was the end of that slide here. Let me, do you yes. want me to open up the PDF? Yes, please. Sorry, just one more moment. We wait. This is the Magra for circuit connection. What we showed you. There is an update on this, will be uploaded as they see if there is a mistake on it. So, well, this is part of the blueprint key. There is a correction to this one. Can we have the next page, please? As you see, you have the two coils, and this is the connection. Circuit connection on the stacker series, where you 
the way you connect your wires from the positive. This is looking at the stack down up. This is the bottom one, next one, next one up. Next one, please. You see Magrat Nurse AC power grid series, how it is connected to AC power and the load, how you enter. There is a connection to this one where we sit on the live and you work on the positive and the negative. <coughs> the next one, please. Can we have the next page? This is for the vehicles, for the cars. Sorry, obviously the live shall not be earthed. Definitely a problem in the last couple of drawings there. It had the ground uh, attached to the positive. Um, um, yes, it is a correction the... added to the page. You see there's a correction has been done. This is the original blueprint, and then correction has been done the other way around to it. People should know about that because that will uh, definitely uh, blow the circuit breakers in your house or whatever if you yes, were to do that. Because you got to go to this and remove it or put the new one in. That's what uh, Vince has the correction. The I only have the one that was sent by Marco. Pardon? I only have one collection okay. sent to you uh, over. I'll give it to you in this, this afternoon. To okay, be. that other one should be removed immediately from the uh, website. Let's remove then. that, please, from the blueprint, and we add the other ones to it. So, can I stop the share here? Continue on with yeah, something yeah, else while I get that. Just please, yeah. Just remove these till you get the corrected one. Um, um, if uh, Brennan is on the line, can he send it to you and then put it back up? The next one, please. Uh, I, I have to stop the share so I can get that done before it gets released too much. Okay, can we? Have the dish plates, please. Yes, yeah, so somebody else needs to share. I, I can't share right now. Uh, have you got the dishes, the way the stacker dishes, please? Uh, No, it's just keep it off, then we re-edit it. Is uh, Vernie online? That's what he had, it was supposed to be changed. It was sent to be changed. Um, is Vernie online? Um, Bernie? Uh -huh. Mr. Cash, I I already sent the updated one to Vince. She's just checking it for a while. For a while. There's a demo. Uh, okay. You will change it and put it back in. Yes, there's the newest version. Just got home. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. In any case, uh, yeah, they want you to rename it. I put the, a different date for every version. Okay, we need the last version, the complete set. 
So you can check the date at the end for every file. So what's the latest dates that the, that's the latest version. How long is it going to take, Vince? Um, <clears throat> um, Vince will be working on the website to take that down. I'm not sure how long that will take and put up the other one. Ah. Um, I don't have a copy of it. We come back to it. We come back to it. We go to something else. When it's completely done, we come to it for the download. Um, the process you got to remember as we said uh, the units is made by you the way you see it and the way you want to do it and in that process you have to follow the procedure which is we explained this morning you put that on the magraph side of the specific interior when you go to it Follow the procedure the way it should be done, that you don't make any mistakes in connection, in understanding how you have to use it, how you have to set it up, and how you can bring it in. As we said yesterday, I mentioned this morning, some thousand units of the system will be given to the Italian community on the steps as they come in to be delivered to the Italian nation. And they have come up with a way to do it. That maybe it's good to uh, be copied by the others. Uh, that was looking at it. I think Andre can explain to you how you want to do it for Italy. And uh, we'll see how they decided to, to support it for the people. Yeah, would like to explain how you see how you do it, please. Hello, everyone. Um, so the way we try to sort out the distribution of this thousand unit is um, is the we. We have different region in Italy. We have um, different region with different area. So depending on the area, we have done a proportion and we have um, give different numbers of units. For example, Valle d'Aosta, which has a surface, an area of 3,263 kilometers squared, we give 11 units. And another region which is bigger, for an example, Emilia Romagna, which has 22,446 kilometers, we're going to give 75. So depending on, on the area, we, we divide this thousand units for to create a grid. This is what we have think. Another problem will be the installation. But with, uh, with Giovanni, with his supervisor, <laughs> we're gonna sort out another <laughs> another plan for for to for to install install the units because we think that at the same time these units are for for poor people. Um, most of them are 
uh, retired with 70 years old and so we need to sort out a way for to install as well they cannot maybe do by themselves so Giovanni told me yesterday that he has regional um, supervisor regional people who and we are trying to sort out a form um, a way for to connect the unit or for to um, teach other people how to connect this you want uh, giovanni do you want to explain why you're going to do it you three are responsible for italy Good afternoon. It's an honor for me uh, that uh, Mr. Cash gave to us this uh, this gift, and uh, it's an honor for me to to help the people for for this uh, great op opportunity. I uh, I think that the best way to to go forward is uh, to help the people and create a net for uh, um, have a a better uh, quality of emotion, a better quality of life, and uh, um, in this way we create, we create, uh, we have create a develop of of all nation. Uh, I feel the responsibility that uh, this model probably uh, should be uh, applied in the other nation. So uh, I'm. Uh, very happy that Mr. Cash was in Italy, and for this reason, uh, I, I tried uh, to make the best uh, is possible for uh, for um, make an example for for the other nation. And uh, this is uh, for for uh, uh, the gift uh, that we, uh, we put a model. In this model with a special email, we uh, take all the order of the people that uh, probably have uh, this kind of this, this kind of uh, economic problem and uh, check uh, all of all of this. And uh, after, uh, probably we make a, a coordination with the supervisors of uh, regional with the help with the help of. Uh, uh, electrician that check that uh, the implant was correct and um, and this uh, and after probably uh, these people that receive this uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this plasma units teach to other people near near them that probably are in the same in the, in the same kind of problem uh, to how can uh, build or how can uh, they do for for uh, change the, the situation uh, for the, for uh, what is my uh, my uh, what I can do I from uh, the next Tuesday uh, from uh, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. and Thursday too. I start with the teaching in the Italian language. So, uh, who wants uh, to know this technology? I uh, have the possibilities to learn and apply. Um, this kind of teaching, uh, I know that there is a, a lot of people that uh, um, uh, can be listened from the other from the other country as the same for example uh, hispanic country i know that uh, look uh, uh, too much in my workshop and so i try to explain as uh, better as possible uh, all the, the the knowledge this kind of program of the of the uh, of the teaching of uh, plasma teaching i try to put in um, uh, like uh, um, uh, Italian uh, teaching like school with the program that is uh, uh, um, 
as possible compact uh, scientific in that way uh, for, for Italian people that uh, uh, was uh, um, that study too much to the school is better to understand this kind of technology. So I, um, for the rest, for the for all what uh, happened, I, I hope that you can uh, help uh, me and uh, and yourself in the best way as possible. Thank you. Don't forget, Caroline now is part of the Italian community too, so she can have a seat. Good afternoon, everybody. Microphone higher. Good afternoon, everybody. There's one thing not many people know. Giovanni was the person who came to get it from the Sanzano. So we have stayed in Italy thanks to Giovanni. We have moved to the south, thanks to Giovanni, and this is how we have been so blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you too, how? Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, as, uh, as uh, Caroline says, um, the whole reason we came to south was Giovanni coming to the Sansano and convincing us just come for a trip. And uh, we came for a trip and that trip became moving down to the south. It's okay, let him sit there. Just move a little bit that way. The processes that uh, um, Next week, we will release, or the week after we release the first housing unit, the Italians need to organize themselves to be able to handle this with the other organizations like uh, Nigeria. The same thing goes down to Alex. The point with this gift is the people who are going to use it are going to be educated about it. When they see the benefit of it, especially when you give half of it to all elderly people, you know elderly people can't keep their mouth shut. They are the best advertising board. I told you, I have calculated everything. So when we give this gift, half will go to the people needy and half to the, what we call the grandparents, the grandparents, each one have 10, 15, six, whatever, grandchildren and the grandchildren with everything else. So in fact, the technology, because the grandma has to understand how to use it or whatever, will spread in thousands very rapidly. And as we said, this is one step towards sharing the knowledge. The blueprint was another. The teaching the way we done today was another. and as we go along in the coming days and weeks, more and more different aspects of the technology will be released. The blueprint will have other blueprints with it. I explained to you something that if we have the news, I'll let you know today. And the news during the lifetime speaking to people who work in the background. There's a number of people who are developing things for the foundation, but one man is heavily involved in developing it. And I spent a lot of time with him. I've done it for the past two or three months. Is that we explained to you this morning when you put your system at the, after the grid or wherever you put, then you connect it to your magra box. Then it goes through the house. You can put a second auxiliary unit into the system that you can increase the power to go to kilowatts, five, seven kilowatts. 
we tested something and the test is correct. We came to assumption yesterday, the day before, there is a possibility to increase or to hide the AC in so many ways from the view of the system. That the system does not see the AC as a load, resistive load. And the way came up with an idea, tested yesterday, tested this morning, and is correct to be done, is now we've developed a miniature coil. The coil you made with 180 and 680, 160 and 80 to make one plate. If you reduce, use a slightly thinner gauge or even the same gauge and make it two smaller units that becomes like the adapter. It's more or less, it's the size. You can use 16 gauge, this is what is used. Now we can produce a system like this, that you add your heater, the resistive heater to it, and you can connect into the auxiliary or anywhere in the house. And what we see in such a rapid way, another maybe 20% reduction in resistivity. So if you put two of it, most probably we see 40%. So the system, your micro power unit, this way does not see the heaters as a resistive load. We think we have solved the problem and it looks to be 99% correct. So what you do, if this is your heater, you can add a small unit inside your heater and you put one on the plug, most probably reduced by under 40%. And what you will get already long-term, the system does not see as such a heavy resistance. What is, for example, 2000, you will see it in the process of the whole thing and from the back, something like 400 to 600. So this is the step we told you. The minute we discover something it can be done, and I was explaining it to you yesterday, we might do a system this small. This now, we immediately go to design by early next week. So you can buy adapters to be able to use for loads. Maybe in a house, you need four or five of them. And wherever you have a heater, then the system is 2000 maximum. Now you reduce it. You can have three to uh, two kilowatts or four two kilowatt units in the circuit. This is a change. It's the same way, the same as before. You still have to let the system grow, but with these adapters, we'll most probably even in next week or so, we'll see a prototype. You created the same double coil, but very small, and you can add to it. And so, instead of the two kilowatt with cascading, if with a cascading, this is, possible, this is what is important. With the cascading, we have tested 5.2 kilowatts, roughly. Now, with being able to cut in the cascading, if what we think is correct to be done, now, in fact, you can go automatically to 10 to 12 kilowatts. Because the system does not see 5.2, the system sees something between 3.8 to 4.2 kilowatts. This is how the system will go. If you put a second adapter to it, then you go around, let's say, 3 kilowatt, what is seen by the system. But if you look at it on this side, your 5.2 goes up 
by another 3 point, uh, sorry, 2.8 kilowatt, which means more or less you're sitting around 9, 10 kilowatt load. So a small adoption, now we've seen it, is possible to do, and you just change the system. So in so many ways, if you look, the ball game, even from as you see in the blueprint, has changed. It's the addition to it. As I said, we are in the forefront of doing this, and the others will come and follow it. And what you will see is a total new system where before and the system you get is two kilowatt at the moment. You're cascading it, you go to about 5.2. And now the system sees maybe 20, 30% less than the two kilowatt, which was already there. So you have another 30% and then building it up to something eight, nine kilowatt. I'm sure in the coming weeks, as we see different condition and direction, we can cross the barrier to 10 to 20 kilowatt. Yes. You just need a small power, very small power that you create the, uh, the need for the alternate. This is what we see. And if you create the alternative, we see how it goes. So the next step for us is a backing to the backing. And if you can do the backing to the backing, you're talking anything around 10, 15, 20 kilowatt power units within the next week, two weeks. This is important. And uh, as I said, literally off the press, the way it comes and it's getting done. And the connection and the addition will increase. If you increase the number of your capacitors, if you increase the size of your capacitors, the number of the turns, you'll see all those start making the difference. If you increase the number of the coils, at the entry, the number of coils parallel to the disk, the addition of a second or a third stacker. You can create a miniature three stacker on the same basis to become the new adapters, but we don't see a need for it. This is the way, and on the other hand, would these small plugs will become the replacement for the cascading. You put one unit at a power supply and you put three or four of these in different positions around the house at the end or in the middle. While you are increasing the power consumption that you can do from the circuit, the system is developing more power for it to be used. This is what is to come, and this is what is there now. When I'm in Rome uh, next week, we will most probably go ahead and produce the first prototype in testing, miniaturizing. And if you remember, a couple of months ago, I said to you, in the coming time, these power units can be made the size of a CD-ROM. And now you see for the first time, we've seen it here. I think for Africa, small consumption, one unit should be enough, one stack of plate. But still, we foresee growth, and then more and more people can use the technology in that way. Do we have to use uh, or produce instead of one big unit like this for third world nations? or produced as a cassette size 
and now that we see the technology works this way, two cassette size that they can use and they can have whatever they need. So this is what's literally of the research uh, since this morning. <coughs> and there are a lot of people who work in the background to make this thing happen. I have to tell you that by this afternoon, the first rune is should be on their way. We inform you within seven days after the shipment of the shipment of your goods, which means if you don't receive it in seven days, you get a note from us, then you have to find a tracking number. We don't pre announce where the goods are shipped, the way they're shipped. But uh, this afternoon, the first batch will leave and next Friday, you will receive an email with your delivery. If by before next Friday, you have received your unit, be kind enough to respond to the foundation that you have received it. So we are now on the track as we promised with what we did and we delivered. When I come back on Tuesday, you might see the, what they call it, off production line sample, one for the car and one for the power unit, which is coming to stay here. <coughs> Next question, or is there any question? Yes. Uh, it doesn't work properly, no. Because uh, it was done actually in, uh, in the Philippines, they did make a star formation and the power is not there because it's a different proposition. Vince, is the system finished? Hello. Rick? Vince, Vince may be offline uh, working on the website there now, I suspect. Mr. Kesh, there was a database crash on the website, and that's going to cause Vince all sorts of headaches. He Pardon? Might... There was a database crash on the website. Uh, that's going to give Vince all sorts of headaches. He may be a very, uh, quite a while. What do you mean database crash? Uh, the the overloaded the database. Uh, the SQL server crashed and uh, um, damaged the database. So it may be a little while. Is it? Uh, we got. No, it's up and working. It's up and working. I took off the link. The link should be, there's no more link to download on the website. So we'll wait till that's complete and finished before we put it back up there, okay? Okay, you have corrected the file? Vince? No, I'm still waiting for something else from Renan. Ah, okay. Um, so by this afternoon, you will have the full, uh, blueprint before we go and you can work with it the only thing pictures you haven't seen which will come up is the, the stacking unit then you decide how to do it how you want to do it is exactly um, the same as what we shown it's uh, on layers where you put different units across each layer. And this is the final stage of the assembly. And more or less, as I said, the power unit is complete. And hopefully next week, we start getting a report from you lot how, why, and the way you see the reduction. But please go back to the website and put in your comments. What you're getting, the way you're getting, and uh, if you see any deviation and how you see that it can be corrected. Any questions? Um, you know, definitely some people were confused about the, uh, the way the coil was wound. Um, in the picture, it looked to be like it was what That's some clockwise. people call clockwise, yes. yes. 
I saw it, but that's anti-clockwise. That's what we tell you. It has to be anti-clockwise. Yes. Okay, so that that one was incorrect, and the picture was incorrect. Is that what you're saying? It should be the other yes, way around. Yes, but it says okay. clockwise. But it's the way you look at it on the other end. Mr. Cash. Yeah. Yes. This is Kal El. Um, yes. I had a question about conditioning the houses. Um, one of the things that uh, we were experimenting on was um, actually swabbing the plug systems around our houses, just to let the uh, nano coating just go through the plug systems that are around the house to start to condition the house. What do you mean? Can you explain? Um, we were we were thinking of, we were we were thinking about um, nano coating the ground rods or just taking the plugs out of the walls that are in each room and uh, attaching a nano wire to them or spraying a cold caustic on the. Uh, the is this done? I've done this seven eight years ago. It'll take a long long time. The, if you want to know before you start it, is um, when we used to have the Coca-Cola bottle, I placed wires, two meters, three meters, half a meter, whatever, and came back to the bottle. Because this was the fastest way, because this was the way I used to nanocode wires, bring the two end of the wire, the you back into the call out talk and you create it. And you find out after something like 30, 40 centimeter, the process fades out either way. There is a structure that the caustic cannot get through. I, I added load to it and I even added a current somewhere to see if the drainage of the current will bring it up. It doesn't do. With a GANS material, is when you use the plasma, the plasma itself, the way it works, as I said before, goes step by step up. And this is what we've seen up to now, because I have done all sorts of things trying to encourage the coating without taking the wire out of the house. And it seems only works with the plasma from the system because it's powerful enough to push itself through. The caustic is not powerful enough. And one of the problems you'll find out with, uh, when you use the caustic, when it gets to somewhere here, if you take the spin of the plastic off, you start getting grains of salt coming out. The caustic salt will up to the casing and then it creates deterioration and all sorts of things. So it's better not to use caustic in the houses to get nano coating. I've tested it, I know it's, it's, it's not a practical way, it's a good way of doing it, but you'll find out if you have any leakage, if there's been a, a cut somewhere, you start leaking, oozing out salt. So please don't do it that way, that's why using the plasma is much easier. It will do it itself, you don't need to worry about it. All the wires in the house are all connected. One way or another. You have to connect yourself to the plug line or to the uh, load line. If you connect yourself to the plugs, because usually the houses have two separate circuits. You have the plug system, where you can plug things in, and you have your lighting system and everything else. They go to the different ways. You have to make sure you get the load in the right way. That's why you need the electrician to know what it's doing. Next question. Mr. Kesh, John from Canada here. 
Yes. Uh, uh, there's been some confusion on some of the, the chat rooms that I monitor and uh, people were wondering about uh, if they plug them in or if they plug the system into between the meter and their fuse box, how they can get uh, uh, a limited load for the conditioning purposes. And the idea that I thought of, um, tell me if this is reasonable, if you take the the uh, MagGrav power unit, simply plug it into the wall in your uh, living room, for example, and put the uh, conditioning load on it. The energy that would normally back up into the grid is going to back up into your house and nano coat the wires in your house. So after That's three, not three weeks or four weeks, then you can move it to the other side of your fuse box at that point. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. This is what I said this morning. That's exactly what I was explaining this morning. You start from somewhere in the house and you load your box. Then it goes back. You should not go up to your fuse box, maybe after some around after your fuse box, after let's say two or three weeks minimum, that you have established the nano coating on all the lines internally. This is important. That's that's what I explained this morning. When you plug it in, you start with the plug in and then make sure you plug in the right phase, and then you go back up to uh, what you call uh, the main switch. And this is one of the reasons we haven't seen what we see from the uh, blowing uh, light bulbs and uh, what do you call it, problems with different appliances which are connected to the, what do you call it, the, the load line. Because by the time you have the two, three weeks putting the system back up the plug line, you have already system has settled down. When you go to the fuse box, system is already doing its own conversion and it's the safest way to do it. Thank you very much for bringing this up. Maybe if you look at it, it's this way. If this is your If this is your fuse box, if this is your fuse box, this is a line to the house and these are different rooms, either way you look at it, try to start from the last room. Start from somewhere here, go back to another one, go back to the other one, go back to the other one, and then connect yourself somewhere by the meter. Build the system up. This is the way it is. You have to condition the house. About at the beginning, the first two or three days, you have to understand that these units, especially when you're starting, there are huge power supplies, there are huge power resources. And then when you are here, start the first day with a small unit and then let it build up two or three units, different things that are shown. And then, what's the problem? So you go backwards. It's, uh, it's not, as I said, people think you go and plug in. Even if you build with the generator unit, you still have the same proposition. The condition is the same. It's a, at the beginning, the first two or three weeks when you bear with it, then you don't need to think about it because everything settles in. Everything will be perfectly done. It's just that you have to, what do you call it? Walk in through the house, build it up, and then it's done. Maybe we have to make a CD that when we give the units, we give it with the CD, the things you have to do, or ask people to watch something before we go. But we leave it to the, to the people around the foundation to build these things and put it on the internet. 
but please don't forget to translate the, the, the papers very quickly. And by the time the people around the world get it, they know how to use it. <clears throat> Any other questions? We have kept to our promise, the, what do you call it? The blueprint, understanding, using it is complete. Now it's just what we call nitty gritty, the small pieces to add, to check. And there's a lot of effort has gone over years to get to where you are. Hasn't been easy, but from now on it's not gonna be easy. Now the problem is starts. This is what I explained. At the moment, this is a honeymoon for the Keshe Foundation. Next week, next two weeks, when you start reporting the energy, how you're saving energy, and the energy you're saving on your meters, then other people want to do, is start escalating, building up. Are there anyone who wants to show their system to us today? Friends, Yeah, this is Richard. Can you hear me? Yes, wait, you're trying to share your screen. It's up? Okay, good. Just wait one second, please. My God, what's happening in there? Am I making a lot of noise? No, it's like a hatchery in there. <laughs> the coil hatchery. The coil hatchery. These are GANs coated. Yeah. And they're halfway drying now. Why are they so nervous, shaking so much? Yeah, I just, I just put it around. I don't have just a second. Put a meter on those things. You're probably making all kinds of energy just with them. Uh making those movements ah, i don't want to put any meter on it not dictate anything on there yet i'm gonna grow them when they're together have you made your capacitors i'm busy on that but i was too busy with the kids so i'm gonna transfer that to tonight or in the midnight I have to see. that's one center unit yeah how many units have you made? There are two full sets here in the small, a small arrangement with the two millimeter um, coils, uh, wire. Then I have here the larger set now. My God. And that was just finished nanocoding for the second time. Actually, third time. There was a correction on this. That's really black. I know. It's really nice. But there's still a little things in there. I have to check it, but it looks like it's almost there. So I'll go hang these in a container and then I'll nanocode them again but then do more of a steam bath and then i'll dip it into the um gans paste and that's this paste just a second Yeah. 
my God. That's about the right thickness. This oh, works perfectly, yeah. Yeah. When, when, you, when you dip your coils in this, it's really like a film getting on top of the material. So if you take... You know you're, gonna, you're gonna make sure that you inject this more or less inside your coils because you already closed your coils. No, yeah. when, you, when you put it in there, you can just shake it around and it just the liquid just goes through the whole coil. Uh, just be careful. Sometimes it doesn't do. Yeah, you have to be careful. You really have to see that does that through the whole thing. Yeah, yeah it's going to go all the way through. If you can, like, inject it through it, that it goes all the way around, you'll find yeah. out you don't need a gap. And that yeah. takes a couple of days to dry. Yeah, it takes a long time. I was I was using a a um, how you call it, a hair dryer to get some heat on there a little bit, like hair, like a little bit of um, air just flowing around it, just preheat it, and then it crystallizes, so it's now almost dry. But I won't I won't connect them yet because they're not dry. So, and the. Um, uh, capacitors, I have, well, the GANs there. I'm going to use this GANs. This is the same GANs I used on the coils. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be thick. And these wires then. And you said to use baking paper, right? Yeah. Like oven paper. Oven paper, yeah, that's what we use. Okay, so this doesn't really take the um, gans, so it just take, it stays in between. Yeah. Okay. You just cut a small piece the size of your coil and just yep. throw it on it. Yeah, and then see, uh, see, uh, seal it or uh, try, then to put, seal uh, your system. try to seal your um, um, capacitor. Yeah, after you apply the coil, right? Yeah, yeah. After you finish it with the two lines sticking okay. out, the negative and positive. Yeah, for uh, that, I'm, I'm thinking to use, where are these? I've got these heat shrink things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw that over there and just heat it up and then it just strings around it. Ah. You will still need to put uh, some silicone or something in the ends of the, uh, the tubing. To, to, clo to close it off, yeah. It won't shrink right down. They only lose about half their size. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I have to see into that. Yeah. It has to close off. So I'll, I'll probably uh, fix that on the way. Maybe use some hot glue. But that also might be a good way to add tension to the, the, the capacitor because uh, the heat yep. shrink too, and when it shrinks down, it is very, very strong and it puts a lot of pressure on the system. That's right. Yeah. You've got you different qualities. Some really shrink really well. And just, yeah, I have to see how this reacts. And now if I can get a real tight one around it, it's already tight. So it just it shrinks and it really tends up. So I'll try that. Well, I'll, I'll be busy on that later on because it's I, I'm just too busy doing other things. So and I'm, I'm not ready with the coils yet either. So I, I can't fix them together and fire it up. So there's no use so to rush you'll things. Be, you'll be ready by Tuesday, Wednesday? I'm guessing through the fact that I need to dry a lot of things, I'm going to be probably maybe Sunday, I hope. We'll see you on Mon on Tuesday. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, we'll be back on Tuesday to see. Okay, and do you have more to say? No, I guess not. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks. You're welcome. Richard. Pablo? Hey, Richard, this is yeah. Kella. I, I noticed that you had really, really great nano coating. Is there, is there a special process that you have? And how long has it taken you to put that, that coating on that you have? Well, when I start the nano coating procedure, oh, after definitely. applying the hot water, 
it already appears in like half an hour, 45 minutes. So, did you hear that? Yeah, I got you. Thank you. Okay. And for what the procedure itself, when you use the nano coating, use small containers. And make sure that in, when you do the first time, uh, you have a high concentration of caustic there, and you have a little bit of a bath for the caustic. So, but it's not submerged, but you use a lot, a little bit more caustic than the next procedure, and you um, make sure that everything is just on a pile, ni nice gathered together. And when when you um, do that first time, you do it after the second, and for the second time, you rearrange everything. And uh, you put everything upside down and you just rearrange everything and then make sure that you don't uh, touch the sides of your uh, container. And what you also do then is not only apply caustic, but what I do also is I apply, and I have to show you that. This is a... Um, local uh, brand it's it's um sea salt uh, it's salt but it's um kalium salt salt so that will be um kcl yeah so i just spread flesh a bit of that around and then i uh, nano coated it did you get that yeah how long is it usually from the, the start of your process until the end of it? Um, takes about three hours for the first, but I mostly keep it overnight. And then I apply another uh, one to it, but I just keep it for about two, three hours. And then I go to the third procedure, I hang them. And then I'll, I'll monitor the procedure. So every time when I when I want to do the first nano coating, I'll look at the coils and see if there was enough heat, if there was enough uh, caustic there, if the nano coating is proper, if we already have like a, a good coating, or do we have a lot of holes? Um, was the material just being covered up and making holes because of touching? A lot of things you look at to monitor your. Um, uh, your procedure so you adapt a bit and then you do it again correct your mistake or correct what has been happening there and then you go on and then you go into the hanging procedure where you just keep the caustic there to um to vaporize and to keep it hot and to maintain a um uh, environment where this caustic can actually uh, into, uh, uh, have a reaction with your coils or your, uh, your, your products that you want to nano coat. And you keep monitoring. So it doesn't say you have to do this five times or three times. It can be done in one time if you're doing a hot caustic uh, procedure. Yeah. Did that help? Yeah, it was it was perfect. I really would like if you would uh, do a video for the family that would, that I got over here with the group, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, every time I seen your coils, man, you know, the, the, the problem that we have uh, that I'm hearing pretty much out of all of all of the group is, is that they're really laden with a lot of ganses, but their coil making and their nano, they're, they're always talking about the white uh, particles that they have on it you just have some perfect coils so i was thinking that maybe you had a, a different process that you might yeah have what what you have to keep in mind is that these coils now in this situation are still wet so there's they're still moist that makes a big difference so in appearance so they really look black and no no gray stuff and no crystals but when you uh, have this caustic situation like this, and I keep this this way, and it'll dry up, it will start crystallizing. So you get the white crystals on there. Those are the caustic crystals. Yeah. But for now, they're a bit wet, so that, that makes them appear really black. And it should be like this when you uh, finish off doing the second or third coating. Otherwise, you're doing doing the thing wrong. 
and you have to really go into the basics and see, okay, what's in here? I've got the caustic, but I also have a chicken mesh on the bottom that lifts it off from the bottom so the, the caustic is not touching it. So it's, it's just above the liquid. And make sure that that is happening so that it's not hanging inside this caustic. So it's close, but not too close. And that you have enough water in there, enough caustic, but that the container is small enough. If you have got a large container, you also have to keep in mind that the temperatures will drop really quickly. So it will not have enough inter uh, interaction with your uh, coils. Yeah. Perfect, man. I think you should actually do a nano coating video. I really think you should. I know. I, it, it's coming. I'm busy on that with the whole coil, the whole system, the whole procedure. Don't worry. It's coming. Just too busy. <laughs> so excuse me for that. Anybody else questions? No, I just wait and see on Tuesday if you tell us how much energy you're using. It's going to be a surprise. I'm going to test it on my whole lab. So yeah, I think somebody will be very happy in the house. Oh, she should be happy, right? Yeah. <laughs> this course could be the turning point. You never know. Yeah. Yeah, it might, it might be. It might be. It should, it should be, right? Yeah, of course. That counts for everyone. Thank you, yeah, everyone. This is to be. Thank you very much, Richard. Okay. Do we have anybody else who wants to show? He's got plenty there. Uh, Kevin, how come he's there all the time? Is he? Yeah. Yeah, Kevin used to have Alex's. Yeah. Confused guns. Uh, we do, we have um, we have a uh, Vivek from Singapore. We'll see. He's got his hand up. I'm not sure if he's got something to uh, present. Let's see. Hi, Vivek. I've got you um, on the panelist now. You can unmute. Ah, here we go. That one on the top looks like they're heated. These are like caustic. Um, can you say anything about that? You see I see the way he has already bent all the wires on the end. Oh, or whatever he wants, he's already done. Doesn't need to do it after they've done the coating. Whatever you can fill it up depends on your system what you set up with it. It's very nice. It'll be amazing. You know, if you had somebody who just happened to pass this, have you seen these guys? They put black rings in and say, very nice, it's very good. This is what it does. <laughs> Beautiful. They go ring crazy guys. Uh, anything else? I'm sure next week we'll start seeing the fruits of your work. Will it be open teacher next week too, Mr. Cash? Pardon? Will it be open uh, teaching next week too? Like it was uh, this we, Monday I'm not here. The teachers will go on the standard teaching procedure. On Tuesday, uh, what do you call it? Uh, we come back and we try to make a whole day blueprint day and Wednesday. By then, most of you should have made your systems. Uh, uh, is uh, we carry on. To see how what you show, and then by Wednesday, if you've seen, or Thursday, open session we've seen, then we go back to the close plasma teaching as normal. 
but it's important that people see, people understand how the system works, how it's set up. And uh, the only thing will change is when they see the result. When a number of you start reporting, putting it down, showing the video, the way you make your videos when you start doing these things, let's start videoing from today, your meter. The house hardly will make change. You might use some record in 24 hours, what you use now till tomorrow, till Sunday, and connect the system, and then start measuring about the average, the same thing in the house. And then you see the difference, you see the change. I do not go and sit and watch it every hour because you have to see the overall change on the meter, on your consumption. So uh, before today, take your reading of the meter, two days, three days, by the time you're already assembled, then uh, you go back with it. Um, uh, excuse me for interrupting. Um, Rick, can you move Vivek's phone into the panelist as well so he can speak? Vince, is the system up and running, the new one? Still waiting for the files from Renan. Pardon? I'm still waiting for some updated files from Renan. Is Renan there? Renan? Hello, Renan. Are you there? Do you see him in the background? No. That last picture. Good afternoon, Mr. Kesh. Speak Good a little bit. Mr. Kesh. Yeah, this is better. Thank yes. you. Who's speaking? Uh, this is Vivek from Singapore, sir. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I was showing this picture just now. This is a picture of. Uh, the first round of nano coating complete. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, what happened is that uh, the leads at the end of the, some of the coils, they are not being coated. So what I've done is I've put it in again for a second round of nano coating, but this time it is a vapor coating. So what I did is I took four bottle tops like this, and I put them at the bottom of the box so that it creates some height. So, and I've also put in the bottle caps in there to uh, give a better nano coating. And what I've done there is uh, I put the caustic in and then lowered the mesh onto the bottles. So there's a distance, uh, a bigger distance between the bottom of the box and the wire mesh itself. So now I'm actually doing the nano coating right now as we speak. You know what's the strange? This yes, is for years. So I know exactly what you're doing, what is there. Um, it's part of the process to do, but something you will learn um, when you have such a huge amount of material to nano coat, try, don't forget the process of touching your coils with the two sides, two ends of a voltmeter. Just put it on the volt measurement and touch one side to a mesh and one side randomly to any <coughs> of your pieces. You'll find out you'll get perfect. Absolute perfect nano coating. So you're saying but, do that in between each uh, round of nano coating? You can do it, or when you drain the water, the first thing you do is to create. But remember one thing remember yes, which yes. one is always positive, which one is always negative. Yes. And always keep to the same. And one thing you will realize is 
If you use your meters for nano coating, do not use them for anything else. Because okay, sir. No problem. They, they have both ACDC voltage through them. And after a while, you find out they're useless. So yeah, that's right. For, for the thing, I bought so many meters that you buy mistake. In fact, that is what I also encountered because uh, one of my meters went kaput. So now I'm waiting for another meter to come in. Uh, I just ordered it online. Uh, it should be in by next week. But I have a temporary meter that, but the temporary meter, only one problem is that I cannot go to millivolts. This is meant to, uh, meant to detect high voltage. So I have no choice but to use that one. No, because this goes back, especially if you have a place where it's not nano coated, and then you touch it, then you have an AC where you put your meter on the DC to measure. This is yes, the I put the uh, yes, you I put the voltage on the DC. So okay, uh, that is uh, pretty much all that I wanted to show today. And as you can see in this picture, it has already started the, the second round of uh, vapor coating. So that, that is all, sir. Thank you very much for sharing with us. Thank the, you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, the whole process is one cycle. And in, in a time, if you can, in so many ways, even uh, nano coat your plates. When you made these, you're going to go to putting them on the plates or somewhere to hold them. Nano coat your container if you can. You will see the difference. You work then totally in a plasmatic condition. Um, this is what I've said to the manufacturers, but this plastic somehow, uh, they make more difference internally if you do them or don't do them. Pardon? No, no, we use plastic, the plastic, it's all plastic. It's all plastic. The inside, all of it, you can do because you're in a nano quarter there. Okay, any other thing to share? Anybody else? Mr. Kess, this is Kel Elligan, and I did have one other question for you. It was it was concerning nano coating um, uh, of some of the episodes that you did in the beginning of the workshops. You alluded to a certain type of way of nano coating for the cup of life, and um, I've been teaching to uh, women a lot, and, and uh, one of the things that came up was the cup of life, and I just wanted to know if you could. Uh, elaborate a little bit on the correct coding that you were doing the, and i'm specifically talking about the one when you were talking about you did you weren't supposed to wash the cup out or do any of that what do you mean by that um it, in one of the teachings you talked about uh there was a specific way to do the the cup of life on which uh you got like a white liquid or you it was something along that that, that along that lines, and it was specific about the specific part about how it was being your nano coating was going on to the cup of life. The, the cup of life has to be nano coated in a very specific way. Um, actually, as I speak, if you just come to our house, it's been filled up with the rainwater and it's sitting on the table. The cup of life which I use is what is known. I'll teach you something. You will, those who understand will understand. Those who don't understand, in time you will. The, the core group members of the knowledge seekers have seen this in this insano. The cup of life is what Christ Christ's name said. This is my body, this is my blood. It means this is my physicality, this is my emotion, 
what I feel, my, uh, my existence without physicality. Cup of life has to be made in a very specific order, a very specific gas mixture. You cannot make cup of life by just caustic. This is what I was telling you yesterday. You make different cup of lives for different purposes. I make a cup of life which is universal. And it has a specific order. It sits in eight cups. It has a center cup. And there is a purpose for it. This is known, if you look at it, the structure itself has a centralized point. You can drink from any of the cups, but then there is a cup which is kept totally from the structure. You never see it, it will not be seen in public. When the core team needs a help, or they need assistance, they can choose any cup. With that cup to be in the position, they will receive whatever they wish. We never fill the cup of life from the tap water. We always fill it up from the rainwater because it carries all the energies of the cosmos to the universal level. You never fill up a cup of life with water and you drink it. Otherwise, it's no different. You're still attached. You always drink from the rainwater. If you position it in one certain way, you reach the status of the understanding you just get enlightened. But it depends how you hold the cup and how you have nano coat the cup. It takes a long time to make a cup of life. And before even you start it, you have to understand there has to be detachment from the physicality of the cup. The cup has different shape and colors and it chooses itself. And if you look at it long enough, it will become the color of what is needed from the body. When you make a cup of life, before you, when you do it, you devote your soul to it because it's the savior of your life. It's what you need. And in a specific way, you reach in any state you want to be. Twelve cup of life setting is for the core members with one in the center. Mr. Cash, hello. Yeah. Can I can I ask a quick question? Sorry. Yes. Uh I'm from Bulgaria and we're planning to, to make a, a big coil, like a big machine. Uh, let's say four or five millimeters of uh, copper wire. And uh, do, the, do the coils something like uh, two centimeters in diameter. Uh, or actually more, uh, like four centimeters in diameter. So that the, the whole coil is it is big and we won't make 160 but uh, 320 turns or something like this uh do you think that, that this will work and uh, like we will make uh, why, why are you going so big why not so let us learn from you uh, okay no um as uh, Pug the bear said the bigger the better so 
If how there is a limitation. Is there? We have them the size of a lorry too, but I don't know what's the function of it. Like I want to power the neighborhood. That's why. Okay, show us. It'll be very interesting. No, uh, we we want to experiment, and uh, we have the wire, so why not? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed. Anything else? Mr. Kesh, uh, this is uh, Vivek again from Singapore. Yes. So uh, when you were saying just now about uh, the cup of lights that you use to collect rainwater, I was just thinking about something because nowadays uh, a lot of skies are being chemtrailed and these uh, chemtrails contain uh, very harmful nanoparticles. Is there a way we can use uh, the the nano coating technology and the magref technology to actually either neutralize or bust the chemtrails that are appearing above us. I think you must be a new comment to Keshe Foundation. A little bit new, sir. Pardon? I, I'm a little bit new, yes. Yeah. I do not believe in chemtrails because I know what you call chemtrails are. There are systems, there are processes, there are contaminations from the jetliners, but um, uh, I've seen people having copper trees and copper pipes hanging on the trees, the plant pots which is made of copper that they will convert and move their chemtrails. They are very good business, uh, what do you call it, mud making but I don't see it. Um, I've got to explain to you something very simple. If um, you're worried about the chemtrails, then there must be a lot of hidden jets flying over major cities because it's the same poisoning as you have in the cities as what you get in the jetliners. People who come up with this uh, Chemtrail theory have got no clue about the oil industry. So we leave it to them to be. I'm not a believer in the chemtrail. There are, you see, the vapor lines, but as I always say, you want cheap flight, you got to pay for it. You don't want to pay three, four thousand euro for a flight, you want to pay two, three hundred euro. Two, three hundred euro means more efficient jet engines. It means high efficiency. High efficiency in the oil industry to be able to produce jet fuel means adding chemicals for you to have the cheap flight. You don't want a cheap flight. You want to go it on the cheap. You can go on a what you call a, a oil tankers, and then you find out. And they are worse poisoning producing systems than the jetliners. So let's put that aside. If you want to clean up what is in the air as additives, which we put in from the cars or from the jetliners, you come to understand now we have the facility to do it. You don't need uh, like a cup of life. Now, if you understood in the teaching of past few days here, you need to create, you have to analyze what is in the air, you analyze, you create the nanomaterial of the composition, and you create a magnet gravitational field of it, and you just like a magnet attract it. Iranian, Iranian nanotechnologists in the Tehran Sharif University have already produced these nano layers for extracting poison from there. This is the shown the work of it. And on the other hand, now you don't need nanomaterials. Now you can tune to the magra of the material which is in the air, and like a magnet, you extract it. It's a fantastic time to come up. You can find people on the ships which travel across the oceans just collecting gold vapor from the water, which is floating. There is more gold in the oceans than in the mines. 
but it's in the nanoatomic structure. So now you know this. Now you can make one of these plugs to create a gravitational magnet of gold, drag it behind you in oceans, and you just collect kilos of gold. This is what I've said before. This is how the wrong information takes over. If you are, and I've mentioned this in one of the workshops, if you've been in the oil industry, you find out there's a part of the residual of processing you try to avoid. And this is nuclear materials in fuel. General public is not aware, and it's something because to you it doesn't exist, is that when you go to the fuel stations, when you tank, something sometimes very strange comes from the tank into your car. Uranium and plutonium, especially uranium. We don't clean it. It's, it's something which is not clean by most of the refineries because then you have to get into a nuclear industry and there's all sorts of complication on it. So you turn a blind eye to it as it doesn't exist. If you go, nowadays, especially in Western Europe, you want to buy a land, a property, which used to be a petrol station, they force you to dig out four or six meters of the ground to remove any oil contamination. You know why? Because over time, when this building or this farm was a, a fuel station, and whatever tanks they have underneath, uranium has dripped, and you have a nuclear contaminated light. When you buy a land, industrial land in Europe now as part of the EU regulation, they ask you to bring a soil sample from the place. And the first thing which the laboratory doesn't tell you, it tests is uranium content. That's the first character that they check. And they say, if the land can be used for building houses or not. Otherwise, you have to dig to the point that no uranium has sipped down. So, I'm just teaching. Oh, in the system, because I use it, that's my way. Thus, we assume that people understand that's a blueprint. They have seen the blueprint. We assume that that's why it's there, so we taught it plus making it. So, what you talk about is uranium in lands where you fill up every day. Now, is it more poison in the air or is it more poison on the ground? And the strangest thing is, which they don't tell you, if you are a very logical thinking man, what dripped down even in your tank and you blew it in the air? It stays in the huge part of the structure. No, it doesn't change. It depends if it's there in what the state is in there. But when you speak about jet miners, if you know what I know, they are perfectly clean compared to what you put in your tank and you blow it down the road every day. Especially, especially 
if you use marine oil for shipping lines and there are more pollutants than all the cars put together, we don't even care what's in there. Whatever dug out from the end of the bottom of the pit on Earth, it just blows up everywhere. And you want to know contamination? Then we can speak. I used very to true, Pardon? Very, this is very true because I see the effects of bunker fuel every single day from my window. Yeah. I'm, I'm facing the pot, literally. People like uh, Rick have been so much close to this contamination that they become allergic to it. Indeed, it's the worst problem in my life. My skin actually uh, starts bleeding with, with a single drop of oil that gets on it now. <coughs> now, when people start talking about chemtrail, the chemtrails are as dangerous as global warming. If global warming exists, so does chemtrail. And I tell you one thing, I used to be in the oil industry for a long time. We've seen a lot of SGS reports. Every time you tank, every time you agree to ship or you buy a shipload, you want an SGS report. It's the only thing, it's the only Bible anybody works on. This is an independent organization certifying what's in the cargo and what is the content of your oil, because according to the content, you choose the refinery, because not every refinery is tuned to refine all the oils. They have a filtering system. And in that process, when you read your report, you see the things which you don't want even believe exist in the world, in the oil we handle. We get a full analysis, you pay sometimes two or three thousand euro for five, ten minutes of a job a guy to measure it, to give you the measurement. And everything is in it. You got to understand when, when the oil, now that we know the oil is created from the top layer, and as you've seen it here, this is oil. Oil will never finish. The oil which created on the land or in the seas, they walk their way into the ground to a point where they cannot penetrate anymore because the molecular structure is too big to go through. So they start gathering in a point. When the oil, I mean acid has been through, here is copper, zinc, plutonium, uranium, paste over, whatever. By the time they go through, they wash themselves in it. When they get here, they have everything in it. When we extract the oil, everything comes up. Then we don't have a choice. If anybody tells you there is no uranium, and we even have seen plutonium of a high grade refining oil because we, you think somebody is putting refining material as part of the cycle of composition. This is what happens. Don't forget, there is no difference with the oil you connect to the bottom and good morning fly. And the same thing happens in our little friends, as I explained before, it's the sheep. When you have the sheep grazing on the ground, he Oh, whatever is on the ground is absorbed into the skin. And when you clean and wash the sheep wool, I tell you one thing, because I've been on both ends of it, you see more or less the same product on the top. So then we wash it because is money. Some specialize in extracting gold from this. Some people specialize in extracting gold from this because the gold dust is everywhere. 
Then the sheep grazes, lands, it's got a fat holder that sticks to it. Everything is in there. Actually, as I've explained before, there is no money in the meat. If they don't sell the meat for the sheep, they have so much leftovers. There is, in some cases, you sell the carcass for 50, let's say, the wool might give you 20, 15, sometimes. The residue of the dirt can sometimes create you $100. Depends where the ship comes from, where it's been grazed. You buy wool from sheep from Siberia and Kazakhstan border, they're worth a lot of money because land is extremely rich with the earth material. So it's the same at the bottom. People, a lot of you don't know a lot of things, but in the commercial world, when people start talking about the chemtrails, nanotechnology is there to do it. Now you have a plasma technology, which standard technology is obsolete with it, but this is what you have. Next time you tank your fuel, just ask yourself a simple question. Am I carrying any plutonium or am I touching uranium? Go to a property, say, I want to buy a petrol station. And then to buy the petrol station in Europe, you have to do it now. And if you want to buy, they ask you, you have to have a certificate for the land that is clean. You cut a piece of land, you get it to a laboratory, 99% there is uranium in it. But public don't know. Because in the refining process, it's something you don't want to do with it. Then you have all nuclear industry inspectors in and the rest. You close your eyes, let it go through. <coughs> it's a decision making between profit or getting entangled in a lot of things. Some refineries work to extract uranium because they have isotopes which they need. There are, there are a lot of isotopes we look for in oil. It depends, there are specialists in every aspect. But next time, don't speak about the chemtrail. They are the cleanest thing which is coming on the back of something, and we put it in there, we know exactly what comes out. Oil industry, motor car industry, and marine industry, we don't know what comes out of the end. Next question. Hi, Mr. Cash. Good afternoon. Here is the Hello, Yeah, the nastiest Ludmill in the world. I don't know. This is what you like to be known as, but you're one of the nicest guys I've known. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I have a kind of a longish question. Actually, question is short, but the story is long around. Uh, you said these uh, power supplies are nano coating the wires. And um, in most of the world, wherever the wires are connected, they are just twisted. And uh, if that twist nano coats, that means there is a big resistance in the twist. So as soon as you detach the power supply and apply the standard AC around, that means there is going to start and the fire is going, the house is going to catch a fire. You can start any room as you like. No, I mean, at some point, maybe somebody is going to disconnect that power supply. We have disconnected the power supply, nothing happens. This is what they call a scaremongering. Nothing happens because you nano coat and the lines are nano coated. People have taken it off, they've taken it from brother's house to sister's house. You take it out, you put it back in, 
there is no such thing because you're dealing with plasma. You're not dealing with matter. If it was a short circuit, yes. Nanomaterials transfer their energy across because don't forget when you take it out, the line is already nanocoated. The house is not nanocoated. The energy is gravitational magnetical. It is not a current that it can create fire. But when you take it off completely, you need to start again to use the standard AC. Doesn't matter. It's a standard AC still going through. I think this is what you don't understand. Let's explain it. The standard AC is going when you have a resistive unit because you still pay, what is it, 40% or whatever percent of the electricity you use. AC is continuously flowing because you've got a matter of state. So nothing has changed. The only thing you're going to have is a fantastic nano-coated uh, system, isolated completely. So even if you have a problem with your plastic coating, now you have insulated it. Actually, it saves you from any possible shortcuts. OK, thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Any other question? Is the blueprint up yet? Or are you still waiting, Vince? Hello. Not sure if uh, Vince is here right now or is he is doing it? Yeah, I'm here. Just oh, give me a couple moments here. He's probably busy. Is it uh, up? Back. Have you received a package from uh, work? Yeah, I've, I've got a couple of them here. I'm just getting them all sorted. And I think there's one more that we're just trying to work out. So just one more moment here. Let me uh, okay. figure it out. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's, a, there's a question on the, somebody had that question from the first session today, and it was regarding uh, the thermal overload uh, uh, protection. And he, it, Eugene was asking, will a freezer thermal overload protection work? In other words, there's a, a thermal the overload. The overload loading is just by heating, because the only thing will happen, the copper gets heated. And we have put a 55, 60 degree uh, circuit breaker that if you overload it, the supply cuts off. And you so, see your heater doesn't work. And then you go back to it, let it cool down, reconnect it, or take the load you had off it. You'll, so, find, out, you'll find out if you start adding a small load that you can nano coat more and then with the cascading, you you can carry on increasing the load application on the system. At the beginning, you can't do, but as you increase the uh, nano coating and the power supply freedom, you'll find out you can do more and more loads. So, load. so for people making their own um, uh, supplies, power supplies, they might want to use that um, circuit breaker. From... You need it. Right. You okay. need the circuit breaker. You need the thermometer circuit breaker that measures not the current, because uh, which current are you going to measure? The mm -hmm. DC which is flowing or AC? So right. the, the easiest thing, circuit breaker in the thermo, thermo what do you call it, temperature circuit, uh, thermal, circuit breaker. Right, thermal uh, yeah. circuit Pardon? breaker. It's just the heat. As it's 55 degrees, the circuit breaks. It's not a high current, it's just a temperature measurement. Okay, that's good information. Thanks for that question too, uh, Eugene. Just to give the, you less than mm -hmm. 50 cents, they're very cheap pieces. Yeah. Hello? Just to give a hint, uh, most uh, vacuum cleaner uh, motors uh, are under-designed and they have such a thermal uh, switch. 
So if it uh, runs uh, five minutes or ten minutes and it heats up, it switches off. It starts when it cools again. So we don't use vacuum cleaners. Yeah, the component is available everywhere. It's easy to get. It. Ah, okay. It, it any other happen. questions or any other comment? I have a question. Yes. Uh, because I have seen uh, different uh, versions of these drawings, so until you get the, the final uh, version. Like the final to... version is getting loaded. Yes, I'd like to ask you, I have seen uh, two versions for how to interconnect uh, the coils in uh, the Ke uh, Cash Foundation Filipina version. It uh, goes uh, on the gravitational uh, coils uh, clockwise and on the magnetical coils anti-clockwise. And uh, in the uh, Cash Foundation Brazil's uh, drawing, all uh, connections uh, are following a stream uh, on anti-clockwise. Yes. So which is which is one, no, no. Yes. which is the the right one? We do the the anti-clockwise, which is done. You have to ask the, we, the all the coils have to be anti-clockwise. I don't mean the, the the twist of the coil, but the direction of entry point, exit point, how they are connected together. Which I yes, I you do. No, no, there are two different things we are talking about. The coils are anti-clockwise, but clear. the gravitational connections are clockwise, the magneticals are anti-clockwise. So this is your, the black one in the center is your gravitational. You go clockwise, you go to the next one, you go clockwise. What happened? Rick asked me to stop the screen share. Yeah, so this is not there. Your, your coils are all anti-clockwise when you wind your coils. But when you do your assembly, this here, I have to, uh, the size of my pen, you got to lift it up. Ah, you went there, okay. The, the coils, when you connect, can you go black? Choose a black color, please. Okay, the coil you choose, it, it's, trans, it's not going, it's okay, no problem. You go your gravitational, you go gravitational, you go magnetical. Uh, you might need to lift your finger up, Mr. Cash, every time you move, uh, there we go. No, so I want, uh, okay, so you go magnetical, and then you go magnetical, outer, and you come back. So the smaller yep, yep. diameter uh, coils are connected one after the other in the clockwise direction and uh, the uh, thicker coils, uh, which we call magnetical, uh, go uh, just anti-clockwise. Yes. Thank you. That's how it should be. That's how it's done. Then you have the bottom of your, your coils are both anti-clockwise when you wind them. They all go that way, when you look at it, they go this way. Can we take this color off? Can you clean it? Take all of it off, all of it. Go back even more, more, more. Okay, okay, that's perfect, thank you very much. So what you have is your coils are anti-clockwise. And don't forget, when we speak about the connection, we look at the effects. We don't look at the winding of the uh, copper. We look at the effect of interaction of the gravitational magnetic field. This is what I was explaining yesterday. 
you are continuously looking for mechanical look of it. You look for the field interaction of it. <coughs> so, if you look, this is the beginning of your magnetical, gravitational. So, you go through. You come to gravitation of this point. Can you give me another color, please? Uh, all right, that's good. And then now you go here, gravitational. When you come out, can you give me another color? Uh, yeah. Then you go to the magnetical. A magnetical is anticlockwise. Here. Yes. Another color. Here we go. Magnetical and clockwise. And you come out. So, can you give me another color, please? Okay. Uh, yellow. So, this is your beginning to your gravitational central, and there are the two lines you have. In fact, if you want to really look at it, this has to be turned upside down. <laughs> then you see it. And then what you do, you connect this here to the negative of the next system. And then you connect this one. If this is your center plate, give me a color. Thank you. You connect it to the positive of the other system. There is something you've got to understand. In design, some designs, we look at bottom layer top. And Philippines sometimes has worked with their designs, top layer bottom. This is what we know, because when I designed our end in our work, we went bottom up. And then, but they worked, I worked up, down, they worked up, top up, and then we had to change it that all the designs go the same, and it created a confusion in design somewhere. Because if you have your bottom tack here, you're coming in, I went that way. And they went this way. It was, and then that's where the confusion was coming. It's just too many things. It was trying to get things to, to 100% working. Uh, yes, no problem. Any other question? Rick says, "Cousins, interesting. It means problem." <laughs> well, he's uh, anonymous. Says, uh, "Curious question. Once you guys finish your spaceship, will it be open to all humans to explore space?" Pardon? He says, "Once you once you guys have finished your spaceship, will it be open to all humans to to explore space?" To the nice ones, yes. <laughs> As I told you, you will understand very soon. It took us to go step by step. It's taken us less than three months in this building, more or less, to bring the breakthrough we were waiting for to do that we had a freedom. And uh, now that we have broken through, you start seeing everything which we have told you, because now there is no limitation. As I said, I even read in past few hours today, there are a number of governments who dismiss the technology and they see their scientists behind the line are working. You thought you're doing making system. You got to know what's happening in energy ministries around Europe and in North America. You people are 
making a few coils. Governments are building, they are testing, and I tell you one thing, they know where it's coming. They get reports, you understand what's going on. In the background, a number of European energy agencies have been sitting with you lots since Monday. And their nano coating is much better than you lot. They already know the test result. And if you like, we can give you the results from some of those laboratories as well. So don't be fooled, they didn't turn up in that ministerial meeting. All the EU countries are fully fast testing systems. So we shall see next week. If you're a good person, you fly. And if you think you're a good person, you come to the system, you say, no, I don't want to fly. And I've explained this why. You will not be able to breathe. The breathing is your biggest problem because you're conscious, your emotion knows your intention, you will, it's like choking. Have you ever been, have you ever suffered from claustrophobia? You feel it. You won't be able to walk in it because your emotion, your intentions are wrong. It's the best deterrent. You're hung by your noose of your own emotion and now you realize what's gonna happen. I told you, same as these, the systems are not just for you, energy and magnetic field. It carries the emotion. It's both magnetical, gravitational, and just have a look. What did I tell you just now? What did I tell you? The system is upside down. your emotional part, your physical part. One day you understand that I've got you and you still haven't seen it. You cannot misuse the system, even if you try to burn somebody's houses down, it turns out to be a flower. Matter systems will do. If you look, the way I explained this to you yesterday, and you just missed it. Look at the stacker unit. You change physicality. I explained yesterday to you, you connect it to the main, you go through the emotional part, you go to the, what they call the soul part, the higher order, and you take. From here, you go back to create matter state. So this which is what it is. This is the most complicated, simplest way gravitational magnetic fields interact. And I told you just two minutes ago, these systems drawn upside down. The emotion has its own gravitational magnetic field independent. The physicality of this is not independent gravitational magnetic field. And what it gives from its gravitational, it adds to the magnetical. How many times we have drawn this? You will find out that something very strange. I've seen it, I hear it, but I ignore it because I know it, because if I say it creates other problems for other people. 
in the houses where you will start using these magra powers, you will find people getting very honest. People, behavior will change. Because you remember you put an orange on top of the cup and you had the taste of orange because of the field. Now you can see the balanced field. Lying in the houses which these things work become actually horrible. People will tell you, come outside, I want to speak to you. Not in this house, because in the house I can't lie. And I've seen the results of it in two or three families now. But I don't say anything, because if you say, it brings peace. You got to understand how the society at the present creates little, 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 little headaches, concerns, that when you put it together, it becomes a very big concern, even in the house. Now, this is one step which you take away. Have you ever just look what's going to happen? In the next two or three months, you put these things in your houses. You just forget even to forget or put the light out. Because it's there. It'll be there forever. Now think what that little light for years has been in the back of your mind. How much energy? It's like a fibromyalgia. In little places, taking energy. Or have you switched the light off? It costs money. It's uh, how I switch, did I switch the light off? How many times you got up and you gone downstairs if I left the light on? By tomorrow morning, I don't have to pay the bill for it. All these little, little nags which fills the cup of anger will disappear. You do not understand how man has conditioned himself to suffering and have accepted the suffering. And then it's affected his performance, his way of thinking. Now, you can use as much energy as you like. You don't have to worry. It's not just the financial where we showed 2,000 euro, 2,500 euro family saving. It's the comfort. How many times you parents, it's a weekend, it's a holidays, you want to take the children to the sea. You think, how much fuel do we have? Do I have the money to pay for the fuel to take them to have pleasure? How much you suffered not being able to give a child something because you have to calculate the fuel to the work. Now it's not there, it's a pleasure. We all go to the beach because you can use as much as fuel as you like. You can drive the whole earth as many times as you like. And these are little things which is gonna change. When you don't have that pressure, instead of saying, that we switch the light off, you say, hi darling, it's the housework. And so we can't go anywhere for ice cream because no fuel in the car, or we go for two ice creams because there is no fuel cost. Very interesting will be if the wage payers will start reducing people's salary because now they don't have to pay for the heating and the lighting. Or they say, okay, we keep the wages the same. Now it's a pleasure for you to how about you have extra. The change, this thing will change the society beyond your recognition. I just need time. I waited 40 years, another three or four weeks or three months, four months is nothing compared to what's today. Because now you have it, you wanted everything, it has everything and pleasure enough, it brings a lot of love and care. Because now a lot of nine things is not there. You're hungry darling, we don't have food tonight, but I put a bottle of water near, it absorbs some energy, at least you drink the water, but you're not hungry tonight. Don't forget when you put a collection of these together near each other, and you put the water in, it's absorbing energy, 
equal, you made it after copper. Copper is tissue muscle of communication of the body of the man, of the red flesh. When you go to sleep, why do you go to physical sleep? For that to recover the physicality. And you put a cup of water in there, you drink it. You repair, you get enough energy for the red muscle tissue to repair itself. Because you nano-coated it CO2, you nano-coated it copper oxide, is emotion and your energy. So the water you put around is your food. We tested it here last week with the almond. Is there any more water left on the floor? The ladies were talking about it last night. What are those bottles on the floor in the lab? Would you like to give it to them, Armin? You did? So now you got to understand how things change. If we tell you everything in one go, then you go, the guy's crazy. But now you go crazy with the things you can do with it. It will change. I just need time. My time, as the guy wrote to me, your time is ticking. My time has started ticking the day I was born, billions of years ago, and I'm still here. Is it finished, Vince? Hello? Anybody awake in Vancouver? Yeah, sorry, I just had to find that other mute button. It's behind about 50 windows. Um, I just, I'm just working with Renan right now. We've got two of the files up. Um, so we'll be up really shortly. Okay, thank you very much. Can you ask Renan if he can give you the picture of the connection on the manifold of the car? It's a proper picture. It's a full picture of the connection for manifold of the car as well, please. Uh, I'll share the screen, sir. Okay, but put it on the blueprint, please. Uh, it's with uh, Vince already. Okay, thanks very much. Any other question while they're getting the thing done in the background? Mr. Kish, this is John from Canada again. Um, I'm going to be building systems for mobility scooters. They are purely electric devices uh, to help the old folks get around. Would the connection be very similar to the car system where one would the, the positive end of the reactor go to the battery and the negative end go to the case of the motor? It doesn't go. Have a look at it. This goes on the air vent conduct. You have there, a look is, at it. there is no air vent. These are just these are purely electric vehicles. Ah, I don't know. You most probably got to connect it to the bodies, the chassis. Okay, it would it would be very similar to uh, your electric motorcycle, that orange scooter that you yeah. had in the in the lab. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Jean Kara asked, um, I love the talk about profits yesterday. Could Mr. K give some more uh, precisions? Like, will we be able to manifest the divine will with these units? What is the divine will? The divine will is when it's correct with justice and everything is hunky dory, as you call it in English. When there is justice. And this is the system that you got. You know, let me explain to you something. Last year we said to you, we have systems that people soldiers, terrorists, or whatever, will even forget that they have uh, why they're carrying arms. This situation, when we deliver a thousand units to Palestine, 
you will start seeing why and how. It will be very interesting to see the situation there. And then you understand that's the whole purpose. You call it divine whatever is loving and wanting to give a love which is equality to a full family. And uh, that's what you call whatever name you want to put into it. You can give and you can take. There is no limitation in what you give or what you take, but is what is accepted, that what accepts allows you to take equal from. You can give as much as you like. You can throw as much rice on the floor. If there is no bird to come and eat it, it's just rice on the floor. When the bird comes and takes the rice, is the satisfaction to your soul that you serve the hunger of the bird. That's why we feed animals. That's why we live. And that's what is called. For me to take pleasure if I'm allowed to receive it. Then you understand exactly what divine divinity is. Not I give and I put there, it has come. I fed the bird, thank you very much. At least I was so kind that I fed the bird. Is what the bird gives that it shows unconditionally that you have served your purpose. You got to understand something. Human creation, human life is nothing but the step stone to freedom of the energy, what you call the soul. You're born from the mother, physical, to the entity, to give life, to emotion, that with it to give life to the soul, that soul is a copy in dimension and the strength as of the creator. That's why you are blind to what is above from this below point. Any other question? Yeah, Mr. Kesh, this is Kellel again. Um, I had a question about the uh, private online uh, classes. Um, I've really been teaching pretty much out of the uh, public workshops, but it's a lot of people that, I, that I'm dealing with over there, especially some of the guys that had all of the Gantz. Uh, we, really we really wanna know more, and I feel like I'm hindered because I can only teach really one day a week, and I wanted to teach more. What's your problem? You want to get access to private online teaching that you can teach? I would like to teach every day if I could, sir. Send your application form to Sandor. We give you free access to all the teachings. Uh, I think he already has it, but um, yeah, um, I pretty much if, wait. If you are using, if you are going to use the teaching online, which uh, it's a thousand euro per year to access to it as a student, uh, but you are using, you're going to use the teaching online to teach the others. We give you total free access, and I hope you use it wisely. So yeah. that's a gift from us to you because I've seen what you've done. It's under here, uh, Phoenician. I request you to send again your application, but this time, please don't misspell two times in two different ways, your name, just to, to write it there as uh, you would have it on an official uh, document. In that case, you have no problems. So, uh, Sandor. Uh, yeah. I've got two applications, sorry, I got two applications and the name was uh, totally differently written in both. So uh, people don't change uh, every hour their name. So that was uh, the reason for uh, his application. Mm -hmm. if uh, if you got his application form and it fits your security check, um, switch on the system for him freely because he uses it to teach and that's why we are here. Um, okay. Mr. Kesh, could you explain how it works as far as using the material from the um, online teachings outside of the online teachings for others and so on? How, how freely can that be used? 
can can people uh, use the video material please, and so on? Really, do not copy. Understand it and teach your understanding. Okay. Don't become a copycat. Just copying something. Try to understand what is taught, and then teach your own way. That's how we evolve. That's how what we understand comes in. Otherwise, it becomes very much common is left, right, right, left, and we have to march down the same line. There is no two similar snowflakes on this planet, no two similar stars in the universe. So everything is slightly different, and that slight difference gives the beauty to it. So don't stick what you hear, See how you analyze it and teach your understanding. Then we have served our purpose. It's not, as I said, we are the only institute. We give masters, but there are no exams, and it's driving the Italian education system up the wall. How can you teach and not to examine? I said, I examine in 20 years' time. You don't know what they come up in 20 years' time. Then we know they passed the test or not, not today by writing a paper. This is, at the moment, I've been to a number of educational meetings in respect to the position of the foundation of teaching. How can you not exam? I said, do you want to prove you've been a very good dictator, or do you want to know you passed the knowledge that will be used one day? And I haven't seen anybody answer. We think about it, we'll let you know. So when you listen to the teaching online, Extract from it what you understand, plus the knowledge and experience you have, and put it in your own language. Don't copy and go through verse by verse. If you are teachers, and we can see your mass teachers, the education online, the thousand euro is very worth. We've done this before. There are students around the world who want to be students, and we know a number of them. We just waver it. To us, is a button on the wall. On the other hand, these finances, the work of the foundation, the team behind it, and the rest. Every person you see on the line, working in the background, arranging things, they're all paid, and we pay one of the best wages standard around in the technology. We don't snitch and nudge. There is a limit we pay. And most of the educational fees goes for these kind of operations, paying for the premises like this, which we don't own. And to have such a prestigious places, you have to pay top values to be in it. But if you're a teacher and you can teach, or you just want a free ride, we give you a free ride, but if you don't use it to teach, then you have, in a way, Take you from your own soul. That's the way I look at it. But people like you, I've seen you done yesterday and the way you are doing. We have to support you that you can teach not 500, maybe 5,000. I make a problem, Mr. Cash. You don't need make a promise to your soul. You don't need to make any promise. I've seen what you've done and it's beautiful. I hope you can use it in a better way to make it much more deeper that. We can change the understanding. You have to know what I know, or you understand what I understand when I see a black American. I have a lot of respect for you, but people's society doesn't look that way. But, and you all know, you have the freedom. And in any shape or way, we can support you. Our Cash Foundation is open to you. You've done a beautiful job. Thank you, Mr. Cash. You're welcome. Any other question? Uh, the way I look at it, maybe, <laughs> is the way I've worked around the 30 years around the international world. There's been as much injustice to black Americans as has been to the black in Africa. So it doesn't make any difference. Either way, we can help you to bring you up to the level that we all stand equal 
that's my job. Um, Mr. Ketch? Yes. I just wanted to say that I love you, man. I love you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Cash, uh, I'll share the, how to connect to the vehicle. Yeah. Can we have the screen share, please? Okay. Sharing. We will go on the screen. Yes. Where is Fabio? Smoking. He wants to kill himself so young. Okay. Oh, Please. Fabio. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. This is the option two how to connect to the. Again. Wait. Okay. The another option to connect your Magrab power in your car. So from your battery connection, you have a from your Magrab power, you have a positive and a negative lines. So the positive line goes parallel to the positive connection, and the negative line uh, goes to the intake manifold grounding point at the top of the engine and also an extension to the back of the car there's a lock screw there you can have another grounding point so this will close the circuit because the starter motor ground connection is connected to the negative of the battery so as you can see this setup will create a plasma loop in your engine and car body. Very inefficient. Making your car front as field exit and the rear as field entry. And the rest is for you to discover what happens to your car. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, but depends where you push the plasma. We are not looking for connection, just a connection. We are looking for where we can convert the energy of the plasma. Yeah. The positive is connected to the battery. Yes, but from the Which other line? Between the battery and the car. Yes. You can, no, we put it there, there is a reason for it. You don't put it between battery and the starter. The plasma has to go the way it is because you'll find out your battery becomes part of your power supply. This is a continuous GANS, sorry. This is how, you can try, try in any direction, but the whole point is to create the energy here, conversion using the plasma. It doesn't matter. Uh, to me, I, I put it on top of the uh, shock absorber. When I, when I took the engine out of the car six, seven years ago, but to me is irrelevant because in fact, you don't need any of these. We took the engine out, we took the starter motor out. To me, you need a position where your wheels are here to create plasmatic pressure, like the word uh, plasmatic pressure on, on the planet, creates the rotation of the planet. To me, having even this is too, but this is the way you want to work with it. If you take the engine out, you take a starter motor out, you use the plasmatic pressure, you use the battery as a buffer zone more or less. And then you connect it to the other side where the battery comes that the plasmatic force creates rotation in the car. 
I took even the transmission part out. There was nothing there. I have no fuel tank. I have the key, I'll show you exactly. It's totally empty. To put it where you want to create the pressure point. So if you come usually to the battery on one side, you try to access the next point of contact should be uh, crankshaft, you call it. Yeah, where you take it out and you connect it to the wheels of the car. It creates a field pressure the two try to interact. You, you got to realize something. When you come this way, you come very powerful. When you come through the body and the connection, you come weaker. You create plasmatic change because it's in the structure of the matter. Instead of getting your AC power, you get the rotation in the wheels. It's very easy to the wires around the body. In a way, you can use the back of the wire. You see, can I go to the screen, please? Uh, you got to understand how uh, my thinking is. I can be 100% wrong as usual. But uh, the biggest mistake I made, I was born. And the body of a man. So you have your unit. It creates it. You have your wheels. You want to create from your unit, battery being included in it, you want to create a point that the other side which comes in, the difference is that the two cannot meet. This has already become weaker. This is a direct supply to the leg and the interaction happens inside the body of the, the driving wheel. It pushes itself. It's beautiful when you see it and then you will see the system, because of not being able to do, it creates a gravitational magnetic and the car just lifts. You heard people who have these things in their car, they talk about uh, steering becoming very easy. Yes. Yes. Just curious, how did you control the movement of the car? We have no gearbox. We have only wheels, and if you look at the pictures, they're built to have little hair dryers. Because you just lift enough. I asked the Belgian authorities if I can test my car down the motorway, they said no. Okay, Cam, is the blueprint done now? Vince? Hello. Yes, I'm just looking for the buttons here a sec. Okay, yes. So you can go to um, keshfoundation.org slash magravs and it'll take you to the blueprint site where we also have uh, the, the documents available in a PDF uh, form uh, of what we were showing you before in pictures. Uh, there are the updated versions as well. We're also getting the notes and warnings site up as, as well there. So everything will be in one central location under the blueprints.cashfoundation.org site. Okay. Can you show us the plates, please? In your blueprint, there is three yellow plates where the coils sit on. Can we have that one, please? Rick, do you have those pictures yet? Uh, uh, can we have the full screen? Okay. I think it's just the initial, I think there's two pictures there. Is that, that's there are two pictures of yellow trays in there. Okay, well, let me see if I can find them, just one sec. I don't think there's anything wrong with them, so. So don't bother downloading, Rick. I'll get them in just a sec. Where is it? Um, 
forward the slash. M A G R A V S. Cash Foundation Blueprint website. There we are. It's a uh, go back up. So right at the top, you'll see that uh, there's the um, blueprint area. Well, we are not at the Zoom. Where are we? You went yeah, into. You're there. Your Zoom is there. Here. You're on the teacher camera there. Okay. Oh, there it is. This is the, actually, is a dinner plate. It's stacked up. You see the bottom is gravitational. The top is magnetical with a, a stop cap. And you see the, the magnetical coils. You see all the folding, the twists. Are those plates too close together? They have to be, it's no problem, because you've got to look at the distance between the center coils. So the distance, the, the diameter of the center coil would be the distance no, from the upper and lower plate, correct? Pardon? The, the diameter of the center coil would be equivalent to the distance between the upper and lower plate, correct? Yeah, because you have to sit, because you you rotate the fields. Okay, uh, uh, when you were describing it the other day, it appeared that you were saying that the diameter of the coil, the inner coil was the distance between each plate. No, it's between the coil. The center of this coil to that coil, if you get that radius, you have it exactly where it sits here. Okay. They sit inside each other. Okay, so for clarity's purposes, uh, the diameter of the, the inner coil is the height of the entire stack, the distance between the top and the bottom plate. Pardon? So for clarity's sake, uh, the diameter of the inner coil is the, the height of the entire stack, the, the distance More or between less. the bottom yes. plate. Okay, More thank you. Because don't forget, your center coil becomes the star and you have a star inside it. This is what I call plate of life. You can bring every energy you need in that. To me, I don't think in a, in, in a structure where you don't use so much energy, you need, but in the coming time, you understand why we use this tree. I'll teach you what is about to come from these three plates. These three plates, the way they're set, and we show you the things you can do with it. This is very much like, in the long run, when we start manipulating it, it's like a brain. Then you use it to move the arm, you want to move the leg, you want to run the heart. Depends how you use it, you can change. In the next few weeks, when we start teaching you, you understand. The, don't look at these rings in one thing, they're built for there to do energy. You gotta understand what you can do with them. Every inner ring, every outer ring, every ring on each plate, will perform a miracle. Look at how many combinations you have. Two and two. And then you have the combination with a field transfer between them. And you have then you have this one to the top one. Why? 
that can control every organ of the body. And then how in interaction in different coils, the measure of different coils. If you go back after we showed the opening of this place, which was the prime up to the walls. Now for the see the fixed structure. Jetzt ist er ganz weg. Okay, for the people on live stream, it uh, appears we've lost the connection uh, with the Cash Foundation briefly. Bear with us as we try to. Is it downstairs? Hello? Maybe in the lab. Hello, Mr. Cash, we can hear you now. No, it's okay. Oh, it's breaking up again. Are we back? No, your sound's breaking up badly. Yes, we are here again. Okay, yeah. Hello. Yes, uh, we can hear you now, Mr. Cash. Go back. Any questions, or is there anything you want to show more of the blueprint? Now we promised you we deliver our promise, and we showed you how to do it too. This is what I say. I challenge any institute to come and share their findings like this. Mr. Kesh, a question just came in from Vivek, um, something interesting, something I thought of too. The central GANs in the system, the little central sun that you add, um, is it, it, it is it shape matter? Does it need to be a sphere or can it be just a flat disk? To me, we made it like a ball. Because the easiest way, the structure is that way. Okay. Are you there? Hello. Uh, I don't think Vivek has is got his mic on, but I'm sure he can hear you. Ah, uh, so now. So um, you decide. You can even leave it empty. You don't need it. But when you do it, it's better follow the shape. If we can make it the same height, it will be even better. The same height as the coils. Yeah. Nah. Keeping homogeneous system, that's what it is. That makes sense. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. You're back. <sighs> what happened suddenly? We ran out of energy. Any other questions, or shall we call it a day? Hi, Mr. Keisha. Here's Peter from Austria. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, I was wondering, a lot of us have not enough of these copper guns. 
So if we would uh, uh, just buy some uh, copper oxide and throw a little bit of uh, NOH uh, over it and boiling water, would this be then uh, something to substitute uh, the, the normal copper guns? I don't think so. Maybe yes, but I don't think so. We've done that with titanium powder. Yes, yes. We've done that with titanium powder. Um, if you are short of uh, copper gans, you can produce huge amount of copper gans in a very simple way. Yes. Don't look for copper plates. All the copper, spare copper wires you have around the house, yeah. connect them to one piece, connect 1.5 volt, am I correct? And to the other side, one amp, and you find out all the spare wires, coppers, they start becoming uh, copper guns. Oh, fine. Easy. Oh, wonderful. You can salvage your spare copper wires around the house. Okay. Thank you. We will try. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is what okay. we do in the factory. Yes. In the factory, okay. this is how we produce continuous different kind of aluminium, uh, zinc, copper. We just connect it to the very low voltage uh, and very low amperage and you can produce it very easily wonderful and then mix them and what to do is try to get as much as you can water out and leave it for a day or two that the gas becomes oxidized okay I will do. Thank, thank you, you very much thank you thank you you can produce three four kilos of gas a day that's <laughs> what we do in the factory Oh, wonderful. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you much. Mr. Cash. Thank you. If you find brass is very hard, but if you can get a brass and do it, it's one of the best composites. You have three or four in stuff. We're looking for copper. Try to make a guns from brass. Okay. Uh, yes. the same. Alex does that a lot. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other question? Um, hello, Mr. Cash. Hello, who's that one? Hey. Uh, this is Emilio from Taiwan. Hello, Emilio. Hi, uh, I have a question. Um, last Thursday in the Knowledge Seekers workshop, you mentioned that we could use vegetation like palm trees or vines or things in nature to make a uh, power unit. I was wondering if we need to put gans on it since vegetation is gans itself or do we need to coil it or how will we create this thank you interesting enough this morning i was listening to somebody and it was interesting to see how the vegetation make their coils and he showed me beautiful pictures and i thought how two men can think the same way last week, a few couple of weeks ago, we were talking about it, and he's been a long time fascinated by it. And he was showing me things, and I, I said, bless your soul, man, the way you share knowledge so, and it's there, but it's thinking the same. If you look, I told you the roots of the trees. If you look into the spine of uh, uh, palm trees, if you look what I was shown this morning, the twist on the, you've seen the legs the plants make to reach each other like a wine. It's a natural coil. It's a gans coil. Nature does it, but you gotta see how to do it or find a way you can twist the threads together and wind it the same way. You can hollow roots and use them. If you can find soft roots, hollow them and then embed in them another root, thinner root. The plants do that quite often. Then you have a natural gans. You don't need to gans coat it, you don't need to nano coat it. Hmm. 
And Mr. Because, Kesh, can uh, I connect the vines or the vegetation to the copper wire to go to the grid? Would it conduct electricity? No, or would it... no that is a different way. No. Okay. No. But you can use certain routes for the connections. That is because it's very easy, but you have to know what you're doing and I've got to keep them very moist in a specific way. Hmm, okay. I'll experiment. Thank you, Mr. Cash. Yes, let us know because I've done a few. Uh, most of the time you fail, but when you succeed, you thank God for seeing it. Okay, I will definitely share with everybody. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Cash. Yes. No, it's just the way the field pressurize. It's just the way the field pressurize the matter. Any other question? Well, we can go on for quite a while here. Uh, um, so okay, <laughs> maybe we should we, cut things. We bring it to an end. Is it five o'clock yet? Six. Oh God. Okay, no problem. We started on Monday, ten o'clock, to fulfill our promise to deliver the blueprint, to teach the blueprint, and I think in so many ways we have succeeded. It's now in your hand to take it further and to show us new ways, but I emphasize again, on Tuesday, on Tuesday and Wednesday, we come back to see what you have made from what we thought and from the blueprint. And after that, if uh, you've been around Cash Foundation, you know, we do not work with nanomaterial and the GANs and the rest of it. We work with plasma without any matter existence. This is the level we work here at this time, and you don't see any of these things around us. We've gone to the step, instead of creating, using to use the plasma, we use an existing plasma, which is our own body plasma, to create the fields and the conditions we are going. A few of the knowledge seekers will move on and a few will stop because they cannot complete it.
Thank you, Mr. Gesh. Hello, it's the end of the workshop now. Okay, so um, thank you, everybody. That's uh, the end of... Uh, just just a minute. Hello, who's that? Okay, well, you'll have to make some... Con I'm not sure who you were trying to make contact with. Keys? Keith? Keys? No, we're scheduled. The, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, North America changes, um, um, I think, tomorrow night, or is it Sunday night uh, coming up? So, the, yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody. That's the end of the Friday, October 30th, 2015 afternoon session at the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute and the end of this week's Blueprint Teachings, and uh, we'll reconvene uh, Tuesday of next week. Okay, I'm going to end the live stream.